Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a full face using nothing new. So I have rummaged through my collection and found a bunch of products that I haven't touched in a while. So if you enjoyed this video while you're watching, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let's get into it. I'm starting out with the designer brands Rise and Prime Luminescent Primer. This is a really beautiful glowy primer and it doesn't really have a lot of back pigment, so it doesn't leave a tint of color on your skin just a really nice sheer glow next i'm going to go in with a bit of color correcting this is the astralis color click concealer in green what i really love about this is that it's a nice pastel green so really light and blends into my fair skin really easily so just on those little red dots Got a giant neck pimple. What the hell is that about? No, thank you. For foundation, I'm using the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate. This has a medium to full coverage and it's in the shade F0.7. Now, Revolution or Makeup Revolution is available at Priceline, but I'm not sure if this foundation is yet. I definitely know they have the, the original one, Conceal and Define, that's it. I picked this one up off their website because they do ship to Australia and for a pretty reasonable price and they just have such a huge shade range. Ooh, that's actually really nice coverage, look at that. Most of my foundations I do like to apply with the brush first and then I go in with my sponge and just pat over everything to make sure there are no streaks left from the brush. I find I just get the most coverage when I use a brush because the sponge can shear out a lot of foundations. I can't really remember what the wear time is like with this foundation but I love the finish that it gives. The coverage is really nice, shade matches great, and I can still see that glow coming through from the primer I put underneath. For concealer, I have the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and I'm pretty sure I used this to test it out and then rarely got into it again. So I really can't remember what it's like, but I have two shades here, Fair and Pale. I think Fair might be the better option. Pale looks really pale so this one is fair and this one is pale okay so I've got fair here I've been watching a lot of Robert Welsh on YouTube I just come across his channel recently and he says to apply concealer just a little bit in the inner corner and on the outer corner and then kind of blend it into the middle so I'm trying to do less concealer and see if it benefits my under eyes because I do have a lot of fine lines underneath there and sometimes it can look a bit. <laughs> How you going? That's actually a really nice shade and it's still light enough to brighten under the eyes if that's the look you like to go for. Pretty good coverage too. For powder, I have the matching NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop, and I remember I stopped using this because I hated the packaging. So, as you can see, there's kind of a curve in it, but then in the lid, there's this thing in the middle, which I guess blocks the powder from coming out, but if you're trying to tip it into the lid, it's just in the way, and... I don't know, I just found it really inconvenient to use, so I was like, nah, I've had enough. Because if I put the lid on and try and shake some out, I can't get any out because that little thing blocks it. I just, I just don't get it. Let me just shake some onto here. Oh, it's just messy. So I'm going to use this little pointed brush with a bit of that powder on it and set under my eyes. Let me just re-blend those creases out. Okay, so it's a very matte powder, 
my under eyes are looking a little creasy. So not sure about that combo. I think I might try the NYX concealer with a different powder over the next week and see if I like it because it did have really good coverage and I like the shade, so there's potential. This powder though, I just, I just don't know. Oh yeah, my under eyes, nasty. Look at that big crease. Ooh, gross. All right, for the rest of my face, I'm just going to cheat and go in with my Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder because I don't want the rest of my face to turn out like that. For contour and bronzer, I am going in with a real old one here. This is the Revlon Sculpt and Highlight Contour Kit. And this was the one that came out in collaboration with Chloe Morello, or she was just the face of it. But oh my gosh, this was an absolute winner when it first came out because this contour shade is absolutely perfect for fair skin. It was one of the only options in the drugstore at the time, even possibly still now, that is cool enough to be a contour shade. So I'm going to go in with an angled brush and just lightly dip into that. Beautiful, it blends so easily too. And then with the same brush, I'm just going to dip into the bronzer shade. And I'm gonna place that slightly above where I put the contour. Now I never used the banana shade in here because the yellow tone is just a bit too strong for my fair skin. It does also come with a highlighter, which from memory wasn't anything too amazing. Yeah, it's quite powdery. You probably can't even see it on my hand anyway. For blush and highlight, we're dipping into some high end. I have the Too Faced Love Flush Blush in the shade I Will Always Love You. This is a really nice matte blush. This shade here is quite peachy. But to be honest, I have a lot of blushes from the drugstore that I really like, so I wouldn't even bother spending the money on something like this again. After I apply my bronzer and blush, I always just like to go in with my sponge with no extra product on it and just kind of pat around the edges to make sure everything is blended and it looks really seamless. And then with this highlight, it does look quite pinky toned, but it doesn't really leave that much of the pink color on your skin. It looks quite translucent. Look at that. Oh. The brush I'm using is the Morphe E61 and it's a really large fluffy brush. So this is giving more of a light application as well as opposed to using a dense brush. And look how it still applies. Oh my God, this is really pretty. I should dip into this more. Highlighters are actually a category I think that buying high-end is better. I haven't really come across a lot of drugstore highlighters that are outstanding. Next, I'm going in with my Maybelline Total Temptation Brow Definer. I was really, really, really obsessed with this for a while there, but then I tried the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim, and this has kind of become my new favorite but I did really love this. The consistency of the pencil is really nice, not too waxy, not too dry. It's long lasting and this shade, 300 Blonde, was really nice for me too. Kind of a nice, cool blonde shade. For brow gel, I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel. I think it's called. I don't know, but it's in the shade Blonde. This was around $30. And to be honest, you just don't need to spend the money. If you love high-end makeup, then go for it. But if you're looking for cheaper alternatives, the Essence Make Me Brow is literally $5 and it does the exact same thing. I've also been testing out the Maybelline 
brow fast sculpt gel and it does the exact same thing as well so definitely cheaper alternatives out there I do like the shape of this wand though as you can see it's like a little pointy triangle I do like that and it does set your brows in place really well but so do the drugstore options so also the packaging if I'm just gonna continue to have a little bitch here look at it like it looks like garbage it has just all faded off for a high-end product you kind of expect the packaging to be really nice as well look nice at first but now mm -mm, mm -mm. So I always like to clean up my brows and prime my eyelids using a concealer, but today I thought I would go in with the Revolution Cut Crease Canvas, which I'm pretty sure is just a concealer packaged as a product used for cut creases. So I'm going to put a little bit on my palette here because it does come with a brush style wand in it, but nah. Nah, 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 nah. I'm going to go in with my Morphe M421. This is my favorite brush for cleaning up under my brows. This is more of a thinner consistency than what I usually use. I usually go in with the L'Oreal More Than Concealer. Yeah, so definitely a thinner consistency and probably around a medium coverage. I'm just going to set my lids with powder because I feel like it's not going to set itself. For eyeshadow, I have another Revolution product. These are the Reloaded palettes. I think I'm going to go in with this one called Iconic Division. I'm just feeling some of those tones a bit more than these warm ones right now. This one is called Iconic Fever. These are available at Priceline, and I'm pretty sure they're only like eight to ten dollars, and they're pretty damn good quality. I'm going to start with this peachy shade, and I think I'm going to do like a halo eye and put this shimmery green in the center. So I'm starting out with a nice big fluffy brush, patting that on the outer and inner corners, and then blending it through the crease. To help blend that shade out further, I'm going to go in with this light peach on a different fluffy brush, one that's a little bit more tapered. Just take a small amount and go over the edges of that peach shade. I feel like I wanna keep the look quite light today. I'll put the green in the middle and then I'll decide whether or not I'll go in with this deeper brown and deepen up the edges. So I haven't wet my brush at all. That is just applying it with the Sigma Concealer Brush. For the lower lash line, I'm going to use the same peach shade and then I might actually take a little bit of that dark brown to deepen it up. Whenever my under eyes aren't looking their best from a concealer powder combo like today, I do like to go in quite smoky, just to kind of camouflage it. For mascara, I have this Noxa Lash Enhancing Mascara, and this is in the shade Brown. It also comes in a black, but when I do kind of like a soft eye look, like this, or more natural makeup, I really prefer using a brown mascara. This mascara is nice, it lengthens and separates the lashes well. I don't think it does much for volumizing, but they still look pretty good. And then I'm just going to take a brown eyeliner. This one is by Rimmel. Ooh pretty much empty, but let's see what I can do. And I'm just going to tie a line. This just makes my lashes look a bit more full and not as gappy. 
And lastly, for lipstick, I'm going in with this Rimmel and Kate lipstick in the shade 43. This one has slight peachy undertones, so it's going to match my eyes. All right, guys, well, this is the finished look using nothing new. I hope you enjoyed watching. I definitely think this is a good idea if you have quite a large makeup collection to dip into it sometimes and pull out products that you haven't touched in a while. I am definitely going to be playing around a bit more with my designer brand's luminescent primer. I forgot what a beautiful glow that gives to the skin. The Too Faced highlighter. Excuse me, what? <laughs> and also the NYX Can't Stop or Won't Stop Concealer. I definitely want to play around a bit more with this again and see if it was the concealer or the powder that made my under eyes look a bit... <laughs> How you going? And then I also only have a tiny, tiny bit of this brow pencil left, so I'm just going to use that up as well. I will have all the products I use listed down below. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. You can also come follow me over on Instagram. Otherwise, I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.